shall read these verses again. Then I will take up the text, which is in verse 8. Beginning with verse 1 of chapter 35. Remember now, the prophet is speaking 750 years before these things would come to pass. And he says, with God's inspiration, the desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the rose, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel, of, of Carmel and uh, Sharon, they will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands. Steady the knees yes, that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling spring, and the hunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. Then we come to the text. And a highway yes. will be there. That's it. it will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. Right. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go about on it. No lion will be there. Mm. Nor will, it, will any ferocious beast get up on it. They will not be found there, but only the redeemed will walk there. The ransom of the Lord will return. They will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them. Get this last verse, a last sentence. And sorrow and sigh will flee away. Here we have the prophecy about the coming of the church, one of which, a congregation of which we are celebrating the 75th anniversary of at this point. Yes, but let no one think that the church of Christ is only 75 years old. Yes. Yes. A lady wrote me when I was a teenage preacher, wrote me a little note and said, young man, that church you're talking about, I, I, I remember when it started. It started when I was a girl. Yeah. I said, you're a mighty old girl. She <laughs> said, I'd like to see you, old girl. <laughs> because the Church of Christ is 2,000 years old. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. And it's good to know that the prophet Isaiah could look down the street of time and tell people who were oppressed at that particular time, who, who were depressed as well at that particular time, that a better day is ahead. You're going to have things happening that you have never thought would happen. He uses a lot of symbolism and a lot of metaphor to show how society will become in the new kingdom that was on its way. And he said that uh, we will rejoice, and you will find this all through the, pa the passage, we will rejoice. 
will rejoice greatly and shout. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon, they will see the glory of the Lord and splendor of our God. And all of this rejoicing is going on. And then he says, and our highway yes. will be there. In other words, it's not just going to be a, a hallelujah time and it's over, but the people who are rejoicing will be on their way somewhere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I say to you today that you need to be on this highway. I'm talking about God's super freeway. Yes, I want to show you that we who are Christians are on our way somewhere. We're on a highway. Yes. I'm glad the church is called a highway. Yes. So when you become a member of the church of our Lord, you step up. Yes. You're not stepping down. Okay. Isaiah said again in Isaiah chapter 2, and it shall come to pass. Yes. The last stage at the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. Many people shall say, come ye, let us go up. That's what I like. Let us go up to the house of the Lord. So don't think you're stepping down or you're falling behind when you're in the church. Brother, any time you come into the church of Christ, you're going up. Right. Only one yes, who can yes, turn you around is yourself. All right. But I'm going to tell you something about the highway, this super highway of holiness. There are no U turns. I'm going to give you some rules for the road. Let you know that if you're on this highway, you're on your way to heaven, but you have to follow the rules of the road. You don't make up your own rules as you travel in the church of Christ. We walk on the same route and the same thing. So here we are, looking at a prophet who's encouraging people. Then he says, look, look at chapter 43, verse 18. Verse 18, 43, Isaiah. Verse 18. Get, get what, what uh, the, uh, the prophet says here. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. All right, man. What I like here is that he says, and I'm reading from the NIV, don't forget. Mm. I, I rather he says, do forget. Forget the former thing. And then he says, and all of us need to listen to this, because we'll have trouble constantly on the highway of holiness if we don't realize this. He said, do not dwell on the past. In other words, don't get on the highway of holiness that goes up. Don't get on that highway and park. Too many people have parked. He said, don't.